is Saturday, March 16th, and you are watching You Don't Watch Sports right here on the Feo Grande YouTube Network. I am Bill Smith. This is the man, the myth, the legend, Omar Ellis. Feo Grande himself, sir. How are you doing? How's your sports week? You know, could be better. Um, Panthers look to be in full rebuild mode. They traded away Brian Burns, the like main defender or defensive player. I forget what team he went to, but goodbye, Brian Burns. I'm sorry they traded you. I'm sorry this owner doesn't know how to keep good players on his team. Uh, you guys did. Um, you guys did put a hundred million dollars into into uh, offensive lineman Robert Hunt. So, you know, you got that, that going helps. for you. That helps. That's sexy, right? Offensive line. That would be nice. Be nice. If... Anyway. <laughs> well, well, Speaking well, of football. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll break into it because this is You Don't Watch Sports, where we are the guiding light through the sea that is your sports talk. We sprinkle a little bit of sports information into your conversation to get you through the rest of your week. We'll cover three topics starting. Let's 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 just roll right back into to NFL. We're in the off season. We got people moving around, Omari. Yes, sir. We, Who we got do. moving around. So, a couple of people big signings this week. One, Baltimore gets the man out of Tennessee or that was, you know, running back for Tennessee for the past few years, King Derrick Henry is now on the Baltimore Ravens. They now have two running backs, if you were to believe the pundits out there about Mr. Lamar Jackson. I think they got a quarterback <laughs> and a running back, but that's still cool. Also, speaking of quarterbacks, who can run? Actually, we'll get back to him in just a second. I'll we'll talk about someone we talked about last week in the free agent um, category. Mr. Kirk Cousins has found the home, and it is with the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, sir. Kind of, he kind of pulled. He he got his he got his bag out of it too. Oh, he did. And the Atlanta Falcons, team known for not showing up in big games in the playoffs, got themselves a quarterback who's not no know, who's known for not showing up in big time games. I'm sure that'll solve any problems they have. Uh, cold blooded, we... Omari. Cold blooded. <laughs> Look, I started off by saying I'm a Panthers fan and they're bad, okay? I can, <laughs> I can acknowledge other bad teams. Uh, meanwhile, we got Pittsburgh, Steelers country. <laughs> Let's ride. <laughs> Russell Wilson is now a Pittsburgh Steeler. We talked about him last week as well, being cut from the Broncos. So now he's with the Steelers. I think he got it. I forget how much money he got to go to them. But he also, I think the Broncos are still on the hook for the money they owe him anyway. Yeah, so, he he got a he got a microscopic deal in 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 overall the NFL player terms. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, okay. He took a but because the Broncos are still on the payroll for him anyway. Right. Why not? Hey, he gets to go to Pittsburgh, a team that needed a quarterback. And they can get someone who was a Super Bowl, who has won a Super Bowl at the very least, even if the ride hasn't been so good the past couple of years. See what happens when his steed is made of steel. So, yeah, those are the three big ones from the free agent theme signage this week. Obviously, there are some other ones out there, but those th crazy. Bill, which one do you think is going to be the most impactful of the three? Oh, man. Um... Like, listen, uh, the idea, the idea of Derrick Henry, and I, you know, you don't know, may, maybe, maybe it's, maybe some could make the argument that you don't know the Derrick Henry you're going to get, mm -hmm. but in my head, I, I still can't help but picture like 2019 unstoppable force um <laughs> derrick henry and knocking souls out of bodies right exactly and so imagining him in the sharing the backfield with lamar jackson and the things that they can do together is... and if odell's still on the team as a receiving threat 
Right. Um, so that's probably where I'm going to go. But I tell you, I am most interested in Russ going to Pittsburgh. Uh, I can't imagine all of those stories we heard when he first showed up in Denver. And all of those reports came out about his requirements of a private locker room and a private office. And he comes with like his own personal chef who needs space on site and like all this huge entourage and something crazy about parking spaces and stuff. I just can't see that kind of bullshit flying with Mike Tomlin. Mm -mm. And And so... And Mike Tomlin's had... got a shriek of not having any losing seek it losing seasons to keep up. It's and they had crazy. they've had to have communicated. Yeah. Nah. And some already. Like this yeah. there there had to have been some communication. And uh, you know, he's a smart man. He knows the reports that were coming out of Denver. So I have to imagine there could be something interesting that happens there. Or we all like to watch the building burn. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's it, uh, one way or the other. It's either, you what know, do you think, what do you think is, is, is the biggest deal? Um, I'm kind of with you in the case of opinions. If Baltimore can get Henry and Odell back to form, with the Lamar Jackson, you know, and the other receivers they got on there. Because, I mean, they were a playoff team this year, the Ravens Absolutely. were. So, but if they if Henry can get back to prime form, Henry, and they are firing at all centers this next year, that should be fun. Their division rivals, though, I'm more interested there because, like you said, it's either going to be, you know, the redemption for Russell Wilson because he gets his stuff together with Tomlin and they do that. Or... It crashes and burns, and you know, we he keeps being a meme, and then we bring back the question during the season of will he have more touchdowns or toilets at the end of the season? You knew about that last season, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, there's a great one. There's a great meme getting passed around right now of um, the scene in Zoolander when he first goes back home and he tries to be a coal man, coal miner with his father and brothers. <laughs> And he's in there in like design designer work gear in like full makeup, <laughs> just like posing and walking with the with the pickaxe, <laughs> and it's Russell Wilson showing up in Pittsburgh. <laughs> that is so appropriate. <laughs> Uh, let's slide over into our other favorite sport, the MLB, Omari. It's getting, we're getting going here. We're almost right. there. It's getting close, but unfortunately, we've reached the dreaded point in spring training where the injury bug starts to creep up. We've had a bunch of of folks go down you do every year this time um but the most notable i want to give you is garrett cole the new york yankee ace starting pitcher winner of the cy young award for the american league last year he is down with an arm issue he is going to miss minimum two months that is humongous for the new york yankees who just traded for one single year of juan soto one of the top five greatest players on the planet. If you have only guaranteed one single year with that man and you just traded away a bunch of product for him, and then your ace starting pitcher goes down, you need to do something. And let's hope that they react soon because I'm 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 just a fan. I'm a fan of baseball and I'm a fan of good teams. And I I'm just I believe that. A rising tide raises all ships. I want the Yankees to be good. I want the the Dodgers clearly look like they're going to be good. I need we need a we need a we need a light and a dark here. Uh, We need the two superheroes to battle each other. That's if if my St. Louis Cardinals. This isn't a St. Louis Cardinals hat. (laughs) Neither is this one. Uh, um, uh, Can't can't be in the dance. I want the two. I want the two biggest teams in the world to be in the dance. I'm just going to be frank with you 
So Gary Cole, I hope you get healthier and uh, Yankees do something about that. Another injury, speaking of the St. Louis Cardinals, starting center fielder, Tommy Edmond. We love Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond is amazing. He's unfortunately going to be sidelined, probably going to be going on the AIL, will miss opening day. That's a big deal for the Cardinals who were relying on his glove and his bat, his on-base percentage. Um, We'll hopefully work something out, but Tommy Edmond, I hope you get healthy as well. Uh, Let's move off of injury. I want to talk about Dylan Cease, a young ace pitcher for the Chicago White Sox. He was just traded to the San Diego Padres for a for a big haul of pitching prospects, young guys who haven't made it to the league yet. Um, but this is a big deal, Omari, because the Los Angeles Dodgers exist. And yes, the Los Angeles Dodgers are still a piece of this story because they are in the same division as the San Diego Padres. And the San Diego Padres have to pull out all the, They were already a very good team. They were a very good team. And what did they do? They just made themselves maybe a very great team. They have to do that to compete in their own division, let alone the playoffs. Uh, So the Padres have just shown that they're getting serious about this season, despite their competitors just... mm, Just north. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, San, San Diego versus L.A.? Yeah. Uh, San Diego is north of L.A. Right. Okay. That's what I was about to say, but then I just really hard doubted myself very yeah. strongly there suddenly. Um, so, yeah, uh, they had to compete, and it looks like they're about ready to do it. So I'm excited for that. Dylan Cease is an amazing young pitcher. Uh, that's going to be my news and notes for the MLB right now. But stay tuned next week as we get a little bit closer. We're probably going to talk about more of the names you should be looking out for, the teams you should be expecting and rooting for. Remember, this is Omari's first real following baseball for the season. <laughs> and we're gonna and we're gonna and we're gonna dive deep. I, I was gonna say so, something about like, yo, dude will be gone for two months. Well, you know, that's only like what 60 games. There's still another hundred. The Yankees will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a pitcher, so that's only like he's missing 15 games at that point. It'll be fine. <laughs> Important games. All right, so in our third topic, as is tradition the last few weeks, we're going to do another wrestling topic, baby. Yes, sir. Sports. Not really. We're talking actual pro wrestling, rather, but <laughs> sports entertainment. Yeah, this is pro wrestling here. Yes, uh, sir. Because it was big business in Boston, Omari. Big Mercedes Monet is officially elite. Oh, snap. Uh, you may know her as her WWE name, Sasha Banks. If you don't know her as Mercedes Monet, get on your little Google machine and check it out because she's done some great work uh, post WWE. Omari, you wanted uh, what is uh, what is Sasha Banks to you, Sasha Banks Mercedes Monet to you? Sasha Banks is a really great wrestler. That's what she is to me. Um, I never, while I've always been a fan, I've never been against Sasha Banks. I won't say I was as hyped for where she going next as most people, Mm -hmm. especially when she was gone for like a year. When she departed from WWE and on what seemed to be terms that, you know, they did not like each other because reasons if yeah, people kind, it was kind easier. Of walk, it's kind of been said by both parties that her and Naomi, Naomi Trinity just kind of walked out. Yeah. Just kind of they, dipped one day. They just said and screw didn't show it. up to the next show. <laughs> right. And so with that, and then people going, well, it's because they didn't use her right, dooby dooby doo, whatever. I was kind of on the whole, yeah, screw WWE, they screwed you over. You know, there's plenty of stuff to do out there. Show up in AEW, do that, do something. Mm-hmm. She took like, she went to New Japan, did some stuff over there. Mercedes Monet. I wasn't a fan of the hair coloring, but it is what it is. You got to have your. Gimmick. I'm not a huge fan of that deep and detailed of a uh, hair yeah. dyeing job. Yeah. I like I like multicolor, uh, um, but yeah, like trying to write stuff in your hair. 
the hair coloring specific... itself, not the not the idea of the just the decision of what she decided to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I might not necessarily be pro neck tat or anti neck tattoos, but let me tell you, if you decide to get one, just like right here <laughs> of an emblem. Yeah, I might look at you weird for that particular one. Um, but, he claimed but, he claims he was expecting about thirty to fifty percent of the size that it ended up being. <laughs> that is like, yeah, <laughs> just ah. He was saying like on like hour three, he was like, "Oh man, why are we still doing? Man, you feel like it feels like it's almost up on my ear at this point." <laughs> like, that's crazy how it like moves uh, yeah that he reveals it. he's like oh oh tony's well, this gonna is be my pissed. life now <laughs> <laughs> i think that was his exact quote um <laughs> but uh, yeah so i mean you got like i i i am of the four horse women she is she's up she's up there i'm not sure if she's two or three for me um, okay, but at this point, especially with Charlotte being down, I think you can comfortably say that she, Mercedes Monet is a top five women's wrestler. Oh, easy globally, probably easy. Like this, like I said, the first thing I said when you asked what is she to me, I said a great wrestler. Yeah. Like I'll get, I'll, I'll agree with that. Like in terms, of, especially in terms of skill, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, it's a, a huge signing, huge deal. Uh looks like she's going to be feuding first with the little mini faction of Sky Blue and Julia Hart. Okay. Uh, uh for the for the TBS title. That looks to be her on ramp onto the onto the company. But I'm excited for it. I think it's a huge signing for AEW. Really I, wish we could have gotten her versus Jade. I will say there's an interesting thing that I do have to note of like, it didn't change anything. Like, so the truth of the matter is AEW is a fledgling company and, yeah. and we're, we're, they're still a TV product and we're hoping that these signings and these changing up of some of the things that I've particularly gotten pretty excited about and have gotten me tuned in uh, to the product uh, is is not increasing the ratings at all. In fact, this this time last year, you've actually reduced in numbers. And now TV is a dying thing. We understand that. But you were, I'm sure everyone at AEW, this was so heavily promoted. And it's an extra special episode of Dynamite. And it basically made a Wednesday night pay-per-view on free TV. And it didn't even make that much of a bump. You had a bunch, you had about a million people tuning in for the opening segment, Mercedes Monet's debut. And then literally at the next 15 minute mark, it dived back down to its normal sitting place of a high 700,000, low 800,000. We're really hoping that that gets up there because as I just said with baseball, rising tides lift all ships. And yeah, I, I would like to see two great, highly successful, like AEW is, AEW is great. I know it is, but it's not the successful yeah. world product yet. It needs to get better on its social media. It needs to be everywhere on the internet. And the only way you do that in this day and age is you have to pay people to sit there and post things all day long and uh and i just it, i just i really hope i really hope that these new signings and i know also we've had some new writers come on and some 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 new tv products some allegedly because of mercedes monet she has brought along some of her favorite cherry picked female writers mm. from the wwe company and uh and so we're excited for that and I really hope that it increases. I'm sorry for cutting you off. What were you about to say? I don't know what I was about to say, but you make some good points about that. Uh, I do think they, because you mentioned it starting at like a million and going down to 800,000 or whatever. I do think if this is your hyped up Sasha Banks is here, 
a bit, and everyone knows that that's what they're saying, or Mercedes Monet, uh, is here, you would probably want people to, people would tune in for longer and watch the other stuff because they're tuning in waiting for Sasha to show up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And which is why they, it, they're like, okay, she's here. Cool. Drop. As opposed to, oh, she's tuning in. Hey, buddy, remember the episode's on tonight. Tune in. Give top, give people time to do that. And then they'll see some of these other matches. Now that they're waiting, they're right. forced to see some of the good matches. You put on an Osprey match or something in the meantime, everybody loses their shit. He cut a great and, promo, but he didn't have a match. I'm just, well, but he cut that's a great in ring promo, like a really high energy. Okay. And that's uh, really cool. So, I'm just so saying that's, that's something they could have done. No, yeah. You just kind of you kind of highlighted something that is 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 often a criticism of AEW where they play too hard to the smart wrestling fan instead of the general public. And I'm sure a lot of the smart wrestling fans out there prefer it that way <laughs> and and that's great but that may hurt you in getting some of the general public and you and you want a little bit of the general public to increase those t-shirt numbers and the increase those public ticket sales has more money yeah um so so yeah if if you were if you were a smart wrestling fan you would already know the card for that night and and when you saw Mercedes Monet come up first and then you saw that a main event the main event of that night was a random match between Riho and the last woman that Mercedes Monet fought professionally over in New Japan. And then you would be able to know, oh, okay, obviously she's going to come back for that match. Yeah. But you have to know all of those things to be able to put that puzzle together. Yeah, as opposed to having that match and then she shows up at the end, major pop. Oh my God! They did it with fucking, and they and it's not that AEW is against the idea of the end of the show pop. Right, they've done it numerous times. They've done mm -hmm. it with Adam Cole. They did it with somebody that they then faked out because it was a Daniel Bryan on top of it. It was like, here's our reveal. And actually, I think it might have been Adam Cole. Adam Cole comes out. Everyone's like. <gasps> at the end of the fucking night losing their shit he's like I'm with my actual IRL best friends the Young Bucks we're back together on TV we yay and I'm a heel cause they're a heel Boo. and then <laughs> like and, and to go with your whole where AEW was going about a year or two ago, yeah, at that point, it's like, damn, they got such a luxury, they could use Adam Cole, a pop in a bottle, uh, you know, a pop in a bottle, you just <laughs> open it up, <laughs> up, crowd's gonna lose their shit, Adam Cole, baby! <laughs> Fucking people love yelling Adam Cole, baby, but you know what they love yelling more? Yes. Now... <laughs> It turns out people like doing this with their own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know. So the, there's like, you guys can afford to, to use Adam Cole as a fake out return? <laughs> so we thought it was going to be big, but I think they got hit with a lot of injuries, which left a lot of the big names they were pushing off TV. Other names they signed that people were like, yeah. Stop showing up on TV and they're like, what's going on? <laughs> and so they lost some faith, but it'll come back. It, it ebbs and flows. Right now you got, do you want to watch wrestling or do you want to watch storylines? Because uh, WWE, the big complaint is there's like 20 minutes of wrestling on a three hour show, which is crazy. <laughs> but... It is what it is. It's been their style for a minute. Meanwhile, yep. AEW is like, yeah, you got all these cool wrestlers from New Japan or whatever, but I don't know who they are. Maybe if you ran a vignette or two. I get like five minutes of vignettes on a two-hour show. I mean, yeah, like it's like the perfect thing is what's going on right now where next month 
in St. Louis, Brian Danielson is going to be fighting Will Ospreay. If we were in WWE, they would be promoting that for four months. That would be a WrestleMania match for the Intercontinental title or the heavyweight title or something. And they wouldn't like they would make sure that those two wouldn't even breathe next to each other for three years. <laughs> I know it's I know it's Brian Danielson's final year ever. Um, uh, uh, that's what he's personally said, I believe. Don't put guys, guys, update, update, update. I may, I may be becoming a Brian Danielson fan. And okay. you know what? It wasn't the wrestling that did it. I watched a video of him inducting the crusher into the WWE Hall of Fame as the Connor. inaugural, as the inaugural ultimate uh uh, uh ultimate award winner. Yeah. Uh, um and yeah. Warrior. My God, the Warrior Award. Yes, thank you. Uh, my God, that that made me a fan of Brian Danielson. Ah. I highly suggest anybody go out there and and look up Daniel Bryan inducts WWE Connor Hall, Crusher. Hall of Fame. Uh, and yeah. Connor the Crusher, and you'll you'll get an amazing video. Yeah. But yeah, Danielson or Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson. Yeah, I agree with you. That's crazy. I didn't even know that was a thing. And I'm from St. Louis. I like how I got hyped when you said St. Louis. Like I'm from St. Louis. Like, St. Louis. Like, I, like I have any chance of being there. <laughs> St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, you were like in St. Louis. I'm like, wait. I ain't gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna be there. Yeah, I have already looked, and prices are very high. Prices are very high. I could sit, I could sit nosebleeds for what as not a full AEW fan yet. That's that would be a lot of money. I should have I should have just went ahead and gone to um what's the Saturday show? Collision. Collision, I think, is what taped a month okay. a month or so ago. They'll be back. And they're already back here. That's kind of it's kind of crazy. Yeah, but they, we're but we're an old school St. Louis. We're, we're, St. Yeah. Louis is an old school wrestling town. Yeah, and I just realized this is usual. <laughs> what? Just like how long we've been going? Oh I'm yeah, like, oh yeah, we we're still... <laughs> we went crazy on AEW. We kind of just started talking for a minute there, and then you guys got to witness it. You're Indeed. welcome. Exactly. Uh, if you want to see more of this stupidness, uh, you can check us out on another show called "This Guy <laughs> Hasn't Seen," where we are nearing 100 episodes. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? 100 episodes? Uh, also, this guy has another show. That's right. That also has over 100 episodes. But, you know, it's what we're out here doing. With. We're out here. Yeah. Just, we're out here. Just we're out here. Just throwing centuries around. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. At all. It's crazy. But yes, it's called. Whatever we, it's called, the whatever we want podcast. I do it with a good friend to buy, a good friend of the show, Super Jazz. Uh, Super. We, thank you very much. As nature intended. Yeah, we talk about just that on Wednesdays. You can check that out. I also have Twitter and Twitch as Giotavi. That is G I O T A V I. Come on in, stop on by. And yeah, that'll be it for me. You got anything else you want to say to the folks, Bill? No, sir. That's it. Have a good sports week.